Hi everyone and welcome back in this third video. In this video we are going to apply what we learned in the second video but in a more complex and complete example. So what we have here is a simple uh, context. So my mess here, if I select this object, this is uh, the context. I have uh, my site, a map, and then I have uh, my four new buildings. Inside these four buildings, I have my commercial program, my residential program, my office program, my service, and my education. Okay, so as you can see, three of these buildings have a mixed program, and one is only education program. Before we do uh, anything, I would like first, I think for, because later we're gonna go to Power BI, I would like to separate uh, my context from my, um, for my massing program. So I will go first and select this one here. And I would like to send it separately in the backup. So I'll go and turn, uh, open my uh, web viewer. Here, previously, I created a model called context model. So now I'm just going to go click here, add sub model, and I will name this mesh. And then I will go and add a new one. So you can do it also this way. And I'll name it map. So here um, I would like now to send the mesh that I just selected to this model. So I'm going to click the three dots and click copy link. I'll go back here, add URL. I'm going to paste my URL here. And now I have my model, uh, context model slash mesh. And I'm gonna send set curate selection and I'm gonna send this. Perfect. I go back here, I will see that I have my mesh here, and now I'm gonna do the same for the map. Set query selection and send. Perfect. So if I go here, I can see that they're both separate, but if I click view all, I can see both of them um, together. Now what's missing here is the massing that I'm gonna send from uh, from Grasshopper, okay? Because my massing uh, needs to have this uh, custom properties attached. So I'm gonna do all this workflow through Grasshopper. Let's go back. And let's open um, Grasshopper. So here on Grasshopper, I have my all my script ready. Uh, it's fairly very simple script. Every green group that you see is mainly uh, an output that we're gonna use as the value of the property that we're looking for. So we have property like land use, uh, land use area, floor height, floor, floor name and number, the area per floor, the building name, building height, uh, building footprint, okay? So before we get started, by ex to explain like the, the script, I would like to go here. If you follow the second video, you know that this component here is the extend speckle component. So here the main input will be this geometry here. So as you can see, um, let me try this. The overall data structure of this, they are four, um, four branches. So each of this branch rep represents um, one building. We have four buildings, we have four branches, okay? So 
So let's go back here in the beginning and I'll explain you step by step what uh, is happening. So the first step is to import the geometry using the layers. And to do that, I'm using dynamic geometry pipeline. Uh, by inserting the layer names, I can get out the geometry. So now I have uh, five branches that represent each layer. So my first branch holds all the commercial uh, program, and then we have the residential program, the office program, um, and so on. I will do the same for the main uh, building. So uh, my main buildings are called uh, mass. So if I go here and check this out, you see uh, it's called mass and they represent the overall um, size of the building. And when I import this, I get four different buildings, okay? So the second step is to organize this program based on each building. So what I wanted to organize now is see like what program uh, belongs to uh, each building. To do that, I'm using um, a very simple uh, inclusion rule. And then I use the dispatch component to organize this. So here I can see now that I have my geometry organized in four branches. The four branches represent the four buildings. Inside here, if I open up like this, I'll see like the different uh, geometries, how they are structured. Then first input that I want to have, of course, is the, um, the name of the program. So the land use, I call it. And if I use this component here from, again, the human library, because I think it's quite easy and uh, simple to use that, I can take the layer name of each of these um, ge reference geometries, okay? So I see now that my first building has commercial and commercial, four offices, and then um, a service, okay? The same goes for the, um, for the other four buildings. And I can see like my last building, my fourth building has only education because it's this purple building here is not a mixed uh, use building. So I extract my uh, the name um, based on uh, the use. Then I'll go and do some geometry data extraction. So I'll go to construct these um, boxes. I will get the, the area of each box. This is gonna be my second input here, land use area. Then I have my floor height by deconstructing, you know, the, the point. And then I'll um, get also the, um, the floor name based on the height of the, of the floor. Okay, so the zero floor is gonna have uh, floor um, number zero. So I'm gonna input that also in the floor uh, name. In the same uh, way, I'm also calculating the area of each floor in total. So in case that you have like multiple, um, uh, multiple of these programs in one floor, here you get the summary of the floor. Extract this number here, and it's gonna be one of other inputs. So it's gonna be the level floor area. And then here on the, on the bottom, I extract the data for each building individually. So I'm getting the building names. So I named them building 0, 1, 2, 3. And then I get the building overall height and the building footprint. So these inputs are going here um, in the same way, okay? So all these inputs are my custom parameters. And here on the top, the speckle object is the main geometry that I restructured here. So I hope it's not too confusing. The main geometry is the actually, 
you know, the actual reference uh, uh, BREP that I have, okay, as an input. Then the last step, it's a small trick that I'm doing, is to send also the edges as lines out, and I'm sending also these to, to Speckle. I do that only for visual purpose, because uh, at Speckle at the moment uh, we don't support um, the edge of, uh, of a geometry, so you cannot really see the, the edges. So that's why I'm just sending the lines as an edge and uh, um, they are being included in the same operation, okay? So if I click now here, uh, just to make sure that I have the correct URL, I'll just go back here and correct copy the link. I'm going to copy this link here, nothing, and paste it here. Okay. And then I'm going to click send. So if this was hard to follow, don't worry, I will attach in this uh, video tutorial uh, to download the script and the 3D model. And I'm going to also um, attach the project URL for the Speckle Viewer, okay? So you're going to have access to all of this material, so you can take your time and go through that, okay? So let's open now the, the web viewer. And ta we have the model here. Perfect. A um, few things we can do now, uh, if I click in this one, I can uh, see now that each of these massing boxes have uh, all the geometry attached. So uh, all the information attached, sorry. So I have the floor name, this is the fourth floor. Um, so this is a ground floor zero, one, two, three, four. So I think it's correct. And yeah, I can see like the land use, it is the education building, correct. Building height, uh, floor height, 17 meters. Perfect. I think the data should be correct here. What I can do now that I have these parameters there, I can also come here on my uh, scene explorer and I can go and, you know, um, see for example, for floor height, I can check around and see now uh, the floor height of this. I can filter, you know, I think it's really cool for a presentation or, um, you know, when I want to, um, you know, communicate some information, you can use now your custom parameters as like proper filters, floor name, so I can, you know, uh, filter this also with colors, you see now that, um, for example, the second floor has always the same color here. Can reset this. And if I want to now add also my context, I can come back here, click add. I can add this one. I can add this one. So then I have my context model, my massing, and you know, everything's here, and looks pretty cool. So I can work now with all of them together. I can again go back and filter by uh, land use, maybe, or actually I'll filter. If you don't find the property, you can just search. Yep, land use here. And yeah, you can play around with this. Uh, feel free to explore more the side of the filtering. You can do really nice stuff. You can also now select this and then isolate it. And uh, yeah, feel free to, to play around, okay? So that's it for this uh, video. I hope you enjoy it and you learn something. Uh, and you find it useful. Um, I'm going to see you in the next video when we're going to take all this data here, all this um, 
project and use it in Power BI. Okay, and we're gonna create an awesome dashboard there. So see you in the next video.